Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video tutorial in Autodesk Robot in which I am going to quickly cover a small topic that I have seen in one of my comments that talks about how to deal with brick walls. Now, spoiler here, you cannot deal with brick walls as structural load carrying elements that does not exist in Robot. There is no brick wall or brick bearing wall. In robots, if you have a wall, then it's a reinforced concrete wall and it's being dealt with as a reinforced concrete wall. However, uh, I can at least show you how you would make brick wall loads on reinforced concrete slabs. Maybe this helps. So it might not actually answer the question of our new subscribers, but it might be interesting because I thought, hey, I wanted to cover something about grid slab and brick walls together, so well, let's take a look on that. This is going to be a quick video, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Okay, so first things first, I will click on building design. I will show you what I want to do. I made a quick sketch of what I am intending to do. This is a slab on nine columns with beams everywhere. And this is a ribbed slab. The red lines are walls that are basically on known paths. And we are not going to use equivalent partition loads. We are going to use loads as lines. And uh, those are ribbed slabs. So since they are ribbed and not solid, it is you who decides the direction of loading. So I'll assume that you decided to have this in two way and this in one way like this, this in one way like this, and this being I don't know, like uh, one way like this maybe. So let's take a look how I can model that. Now, one of the things is that I have explained to you how to model rib slab, but that was for design purposes. For deflection purposes, there is a faster way of mimicking the stiffness of a rib slab. It's a faster but approximate way. So let's take a look on that. I'll go to robot now very quickly and do that. Remember, I'm gonna be very fast and very, uh, very approximate because I have detailed tutorials on my channel that talk about modeling of structures, modeling of slabs, loads, and so on. So here, this is just a small problem I want to cover. So I'll make my columns to be equalish. Once again, if you are new to the channel, we are not doing this every time. My structures are always challenging, but it's kind of a nice change for the moment because like usual, I'm used to having structures where I'm usually faced with a life and death situation. Uh, every time there is a crisis, I have to avert. Well, well, it's kind of nice to let the recorder, which is me, which the, the, the editor always roasts, like have a nice day for once on the job. So I'll make the columns very quickly, 300 by 300. I'll add that, close. Remember, I'm assuming you know those, th I am assuming that you have a decent knowledge in robot. If you don't, check out the list I will be linking on the top right. This is a very specific topic, so I'll be answering a very specific question. I'll add beams here, so reinforced concrete beam, 200 by 400. Ah, that's kind of small. I'll just go to 300 by 500, my favorite beam. So 300 by 500, there we go. I'll add that, close, and start drawing. So let's just draw. I click the drag button to make it faster. So let's draw. And there we go, I'm just doing it very quickly. Okay, and I need the middle beam here and the middle beam there. And there we go. Fantastic. And now I want to add my slab. I go to the shell here and I'll select shell. And in the thickness, I want to talk about how I can make a ribbed slab. Now, a ribbed slab, for purposes of deflection calculation, the only thing you need about it is to know the inertia of it in the X and Y. So I'll go through orthotropic because a ribbed slab has an orthotropic thing. And one-sided unidirectional ribs. Now a ribbed slab has usually a web, which we, like if you take a section, you will see the ribbed slab looking something like this, like you have uh, the web of the ribbed slab and the flange of the web, ribbed slab. Now, it depends from region to region. I'll assume my ribbed slab to be of total height of 27 or 275 millimeters, total height. I'll assume that this rib is um, 200, I guess. 
and that this web width is 12, and that this is 520 millimeters. That's my assumption. This is a rib I know from a previous region I lived in. Now I'm different, so it's different there. So I'll just use this as my rib. I need this because in robot I need to define that. So what's H? H here is, now of course the symbols are different, so I need to keep an eye on that. H in this case is the difference, so 75 millimeters. HA is the height of the rib, so 275. A, which is the, the spacing, center to center of the rib. I think that's also the flange. Is it the flange? Yes, it's the flange also. So 520. And what's A1? A1 is, yeah, 120. The material is concrete. I'll call this ribbed slab X. I'll add that. Now look, this is called direction X. This means that the ribs, the ribs are parallel to the local direction X of the slab. So I need to be very careful when I draw the slab. Now, since I want to interpret results, and robot usually interprets them in the local X axis, so this rib slab is in the local direction X. Now, I could draw one rib slab with the local X being the global X, and one rib slab with the local X being the global Y. This works for deflection calculations, but it doesn't work for moment diagrams. Now, in truth, to be said, you don't need moment diagrams for rib slab because you would have a rib and the moment would be the moment per meter. It's kind of iffy. So my goal was, as I said, that you want to mimic the deflection, to check the deflection. Because if you want to fully analyze a rib slab, there is a video, which I'll link top right. This is part of a full video series talking about slabs. So think about that if you want. For me, I will just do one rib slab X. I added that. I think I added that. Yes. And then I will say once ribbed slab Y and change the direction according to the Y axis. There we go. I'll apply. And now I will add that. Perfect. Now I need to have two sided ribs or double side. Is this the one? One sided bi directional ribs. Yes, that's one. This is a two way ribbed slab. And in a two way ribbed slab, you see, usually in our region, we make rib slab by placing blocks adjacently to each other. Like we place uh, groups of two blocks that are constituting the cells upon which the ribs are flowing between. Because those are blocks, now depending on the sizes of the blocks, your ribs might have the same dimensions in both directions or not. So be very careful of how the dimensions are on your ribs and if they change or not. I will assume that they are the same dimensions, so I will just repeat this. This is 75. This is 275, I think. Let me just remember. My error senses are tingling. Did I mess something up? Give me a second. Let me just close this very quickly. Um, yeah, I did not mess up. Good. So let's add a new one again. Let's call this uh, two-way ribbed. And I don't care about X and Y this time because I'm assuming that my ribs in both directions, one sided by directional, are the same. So here I will just do 75 and 275. HB, what's HB? HB, what's HB? HB is the height on the perpendicular. Okay, 275. Spacing rib is the same in both directions. And the web of the rib is the same in both directions. Now this depends on the blocks or the molds you are using to create your rib slab. They might not be symmetric, but I will assume them to be symmetric. Could be different. I'll just add that and close. And now I will start join. So the two rib slab, I don't care because it's symmetric, so I just draw it like this. I try to draw my X to be in the where in the X axis of the structure. Now for this, I think this was ribbed slab X, so there we go, let me just, wait, what? Oh, 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 I misclicked, I misdrew. See, I'm a little bit too relaxed, so I need to be a little bit more vigilant. So this is my first one, and then I will select one way ribbed slab X. So that's my second one. It's been a long time since I had one of those uh, relaxing uh, videos. I kind of enjoy it. It's a good 
takeaway of the very deep, very intense videos I have on this channel. So, okay, I have my rib slab and I can use it to check deflections because we are approximating, and I say again, this is an approximation, we are approximating the stiffness of the slab in reality. Now, when you try to design that, I said this before, Autodesk Robot has a limitation that it doesn't see the ribs if you want to design it because it will assume it to be a solid slab. But at least in the calculation of deflection and stiffnesses, it considers the rib. Okay, so one final thing that I wanted to show in this video was I wanted to show you how to add walls. So you have a wall, a brick wall here. Now the brick wall has a unit weight per meter because you would have to calculate its force per meter length. Now I'm assuming that you're able to do that and I'm assuming that the weight of it is, I don't know, maybe 2.5 kilonewtons or three. You have, of course, to uh, calculate the weight of the wall and the plastering and any finishes you put on the wall. I'll assume it to be 3 kN per meter. Of course, that's just an assumption. You have to calculate it yourself. I'll go to this, go to surface load, and I can make me a surface load, linear load on edges. No, I don't want it to be on edge. I want to have a linear load on two points. That's what I want, I guess. Let me check. Planar load 3P, linear load. Yeah, linear load two points is what I want. Now, I should assume that I know the point of the wall, like I should know the coordinates of the walls. So I can do that by, for example, importing the DXF file and then using it to snap onto it. Now, I did not import the DXF file, so what I will be doing is I will artificially add some joints or some structural axes to mimic me having a, a DXF background. In case you are new to this channel, please notice that no, our videos are not that simple usually. This is a very, very rare case of having a simple thing to explain. Oh, I messed up. I think I should put X2.5. So 2.4 or 2. There we go. I'll apply that. And I think now also I need Y at 2.5. So I'm mimicking as if I have a DXF background and I want to snap to it. So I'll select the load and select surface load on two points. And I said that the load value is negative 3 in the Z. So the starting value is negative 3. The ending value is negative 3. The coordinate system is... Now you should snap to a DXF background in this case. I did not, so I'll just add this. I click Add, and there we go. And now I'll do the process again from the point here to here. Remember, you have to check the load yourself. I'll add that. There we go. And then I want to add me one full load like this. So two point. Now I will add it from here to here once because that's one plate. There we go. And I'll add that. And then I will click here and add again from, let me just click here, from this point to this point, and I'll add that. Yep, and that's it. That is a quick rundown of how I would do rib slab with walls for the purposes of calculating deflections. Now, of course, my loads are wacky and inaccurate, and you should double check them yourself. But well, I think that. My mission objective has been completed, and uh, you can see the ribbed slab, of course, here being loaded, here not, so there is more deflection on this side, which totally makes sense. That's how I would do it. Now, please notice that this is a rather short video, but I wanted to address a, a question that was asked by two subscribers. One of them was asking me about how to include the brick wall from Rivet. Revit, the BIM software. Now, please notice that robot I told you has only shear walls as carrying walls. It doesn't have bearing walls, so that's a problem. But you could at least, if you have walls and you want to include their load on the slab, then, well, that's how you can do it. I'm sorry if this was not your question that you were asking for, but at least that's part of the solution I want to say. I think that's that. 
So with that being said, I want to give a ripped slap sized shout out to our dear channel members in the contributor level and the helper level whose names are going to be shown on the screen. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart as their support the channel is priceless to me and enables me to provide you with videos hopefully on time and with a certain quality I try to achieve and for that I am forever thankful. Now those three succession videos that I will post are part of our celebration that I'm doing because the channel hopefully would have reached 3k by the time I'm posting this video. So before I finish I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart all of my subscribers for having reached this milestone and especially my members for their effortless support and trust in me. And I'm really happy because I never thought that this would be possible. I thought that people don't care about those tutorials, but it turns out that people do care and it honors me to have you here. So thank you very much. And of course, as per usual, I hope that you enjoyed the video and that you found it beneficial. And if you have enjoyed the video, then consider liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, and so on. Especially subscribing because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel. And we'll catch you in the next video. Bye bye.